This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.com. Um, 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 um. It's fashionable in libertarian circles these days to sort of soft spot the Russians and Putin, but opposing government warfare against Putin isn't the same thing as opposing private action against Russian government abuses or Russian civilian abuses for that matter and it shouldn't blind any of us to the disturbing historical precedent for what's going on now remember you want to forget about the headlines and just concentrate on the history there are maybe five uh, interesting parallels between the Ukraine crisis and the Rhine crisis of I guess the mid 30s first of all you've got a super uh, uh, in both cases you've got a fallen superpower that is resurging about 20 years after its fall you have it moving back in somewhat peaceably and with some local public support to one of the territories that it lost you have an international community in the West at least that is tired of warfare that is shot its bolt on failed offensives in the same way that uh, well in a different way actually from how the French and British did in World War One but there is a sourness toward intervention in warfare that's been building in the US for a while uh, that parallels what was happening in the early 30s in the West at the 1936 Olympics the Nazis proclaimed a loosening of their restrictions on homosexual behavior so they wouldn't wind up arresting a bunch of diplomats from powerful countries and that's exactly what the Russians just did at the more recent Olympics after a year of bad press about their uh, homophobia crusade uh, like old Nazi Germany the Russians had uh, a period of uh, sort of burgeoning fascism right after the end of the Cold War which was sort of put down without a lot of shooting like 1920s Germany Russia had its something of a something of an economic collapse following the military collapse and, you know after the Cold War ended there was <clears throat> supposedly some freedom in Russia and that freedom almost was, was <laughs> limited but immediately followed by uh, terrible economic uh, things that happened in both countries you have both Nazi Germany and modern Russia you have what amounts to a president for life maybe the similarities in there Putin is a lot more level-headed than Hitler and much more of a calculator the Ukraine intervention seems to be a little bit reactive and opportunistic on his part as opposed to premeditated probably they had waited for a moment like this but anyway this World War III talk is not all that alarmist and rather than merely opposing US intervention US government intervention we should be talking up solutions of our own that could be carried out without government action the first thing that needs to happen is a complete elimination of gun control in all of the countries that are potentially at risk by our resurgent Russia maybe all of those countries is just Ukraine but if I were in the parliament at Riga or uh, Vilnius or Kiev I'd be submitting legislation to make sure that every citizen uh, Russian or otherwise in my uh, country uh, got their full right to self-defense and something beyond that decriminalize all access of all people to nearly all weapons unfortunately that's not going to happen probably but uh, using the Swiss model uh, the Swiss model might be doable as long as it takes into account the lower economic level of these countries I mean Switzerland's government can afford to inefficiently buy firearms and inefficiently decentralize them I doubt the governments in Lithuania or Estonia or especially Ukraine have that kind of funds 
The second thing, and maybe it actually actually ought to happen sooner, uh, it can happen sooner, uh, is for individuals to take the initiative. If you've got a problem with what's going on in Ukraine, don't whine about Obama being weak. You stop being weak. You go do something about it. And I can say that because I have, although not in Ukraine and not recently. Uh, back in the 90s, I went to Bosnia. I guess everybody knows that. But I didn't make uh, Bill Clinton pay for my ticket. I didn't even make my TV station pay for my ticket. What I got done there was pretty limited. But if there had been 20,000 of me each doing something slightly different, it could have shortened the war by a year or two. Did you know that uh, during World War II, uh, President Wilson apparently uh, forbade Americans from assisting the Allies? Uh, until the American government finally got involved itself. Well, I say finally, it would have been better if it hadn't gotten involved, but it might not have been needed if those, I guess it was 10 or 20,000 uh, volunteers that signed up for the British Army immediately on outbreak of war. These are Americans that signed up, uh, and Churchill was trying to figure out what to do with them. I don't think they were ever allowed to serve in most cases because of the American restrictions, the American government restrictions on constructive intervention. Well, nowadays, the situation is even worse in the sense that the feds have uh, basically drummed the thought out of our heads that we should actually do something ourselves, especially if that involves military something. Personally, I don't think uh, the situation in Ukraine is clear enough uh, that I would want to pick a side, but if the historical precedent repeats and the bad old Russia, of which we've always <laughs> been around, or I guess I should say, of which we've always been aware, the country that never <laughs> never had a peaceable government, if they push into Lithuania or Latvia or Estonia, I'm going to feel pretty different. And again, you, you look, if you look back to the, the, uh, the, not the Sudan crisis, but the uh, Ryan crisis in the 30s, it was pretty hard to be against what the Germans were doing there. Even if you didn't like Hitler, all they were doing was retaking part of their old territory without firing a shot. Intervention at that point would have unseated Hitler, but like all government intervention, it wouldn't have been right. The appropriate move at that point would have been a general rearmament, not of the population, but by the population in Czechoslovakia, in Poland, in France and Britain. Well, that kind of thing would be even more effective today because more people have more disposable wealth. Weapons cost fewer hours of labor to buy. They're easier to transport. It's a guerrilla world, if anyone decides they want it to be. Third, obviously, uh, the thing I probably already mentioned, but maybe didn't mention in this vid, is that uh, American gun control needs to end. And American control of almost, you know, government control of almost all weapons in America needs to end. No country with bazooka freedom is ever going to fear an invasion. Well, not a country this size, or even a tenth its size. And that's the simple answer to a complicated problem. One that will probably not ever happen until it's too late. Or at least it will probably not ever happen outside New Hampshire. Maybe that's what we should be focusing on. Don't deputize a taxpayer to help fight for you in the Ukraine unless... I'm sorry, in Ukraine, unless you have first freed them to fight for you, taken all obstacles basically out of their way. This would also send a message to the ethnic Russians that, hey, look, the government in Kiev is giving you more freedom than the Russians will give you, and we're trusting you with an enormous power. And at the same time, of course, their own people would gain the same power. Again, hopefully creating the kind of situation that exists in Switzerland, where no, people don't like each other very much from different ethnic groups, but they don't shoot because everybody's got a gun. Oh, you know, I just realized there is another similarity uh, to the Rhineland crisis, and that would be that Putin, like Hitler, rep represents a sort of a hedge against the power that the world is really afraid of these days, and that is the United States. Back in the time of Hitler, that that power uh, was represented by the United uh, by the uh, USSR. So today, just as in the mid 30s, there's this big, powerful 
wicked country that everyone's falling all over themselves to get at, at least in their hearts, that provides a sort of unifying foreign threat that can be invoked to promote fascism inside of Russia. One interesting difference, though, is that Crimea, or the Crimea, however I'm supposed to refer to it, is it's that's that's much more disputed territory really than the Rhineland was. The Rhineland was essentially Germany. Crimea has been pretty back and forth, and it is pretty disturbing when you see the uh, the pictures of so many of the soldiers that went into Crimea have uh, their faces covered. I don't remember ever seeing a picture of a Nazi covering his face in shame or fear or whatever. In the Rhineland, and I think they were almost universally treated as heroes by the locals. Again, as bad as Hitler was, it's all location, location, location. Lastly, I probably wasn't comprehensive enough in listing the number of things that people can do about this, that individuals can do about this if they have a problem with Russia being there. I hadn't even thought about all the uh, cyber attack options that uh, you know, a, a group like Anonymous, you know, they could wreak havoc on Russian systems, Russian military systems, or Russian websites of whatever type uh, that are run by the Russian government. I wouldn't want to piss those Anons off. So, so if I were running the Russian army uh, south of Ukraine, I'd definitely be wanting to limit the number of videos of, uh, of uh, atrocities either by making sure the atrocities don't happen or by making sure the videos don't get out. And so far that does seem to be one thing that I'm not seeing much of and I'm just not seeing a ton of evidence of atrocities being committed but uh, we're only a few weeks into this and uh, the troubles may come later. Others of the troubles we may just not have seen yet. Anyhow, it's all just a reminder how you cannot rely on the federal government to protect anybody, uh, much less people around the world uh, who were aggressed against in some way and might want the federal government on their side. It's a reminder that if you want an institution that's going to do that, you've got to build it yourself. And we've all got to work together to get the federal government off our backs so that we're freed up to do that should we choose. If you want dictators to really fear the American people around the world, you've got to free them from the tyranny that they're currently living under inside their own country. It would drastically increase their wealth and striking power should striking power be needed. Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet, chock full of privacy and security features, two-factor authentication, a second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.